Hey, and welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be creating an AI agency that's going to transcribe and translate audio from a video file. I'll quickly go over what we're going to be doing. Then we're going to go through the code and then finally execute the example and see how it works. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have two agents. We're going to have the user agent and then a transcribe agent. And how the flow is going to work is the user agent is going to chat with the transcribe agent. And then we have a series of functions. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to extract the audio from the video file an MP4. And then we're gonna have another function that's going to create the subtitles from that audio, which we're going to be using the whisper model to do this. And then finally, we're going to have another function that's going to be translating that subtitle text to a different language. And we'll be having inputs that allow us to choose which language we want to uh, transcribe or translate the text to. So the task today is to take an MP4 file, then we're going to transcribe the audio from that and then translate it to some language of our choosing. Well, let's go over the code. One thing to note is I'm going to have the requirements.txt file. You can just use this to install everything, but you will also need, and if you look up, you know, Autogen doesn't really tell you that you need this, but you need to have the FFmpeg installed on your computer in order for Whisper AI to work properly. And I'll have links in the readme for the Windows version and the Mac OS version. Okay, this, this took me a while to figure out, but these are the links that I found that were useful, especially the Mac one, that's what I have. This one, I just followed the steps and it worked. And then, all, then my model finally was able to transcribe uh, what I needed it to. Okay, so the first file is the .env file. Okay, and this is where we're gonna load all of our uh, information from to use the GPT-4 model. So you just have two properties here, just replace your OpenAI API key here and you'll be good to go. Now back to the main Python file, we have our transcribe.py file. We simply have two imports, autogen and .env, and then we also are gonna be importing specific functions from our functions Python file, which I'll get to in a second. And the reason I have this file is I could have the functions that I said we're gonna create, we could put them all in this one file, but it's gonna be a big file and it's kind of a lot to look at at once. So I separated them out because if we wanna change them, then we can just go to this file, it's less to look at, and then we can just change it from there. Getting back to this code, uh, we just load the .env file so that we can use the properties. Uh, we have our config list so that we just grab everything for the GPT-4 model. And now we have our LLM config. Now, the only difference here between this and most of the other projects that I've done is now we also have to add the functions here so that we can describe which functions and describe the actual functions to the model so that we know what to use. Now, I know that I said I have three functions here and all I'm doing is describing two functions here. Well, the reason is because one of these functions is actually going to be executing the other one inside of it. So we don't really need to have that here. So two of these functions, we have to give the name, the name of the function. Basically when you call, uh, when you define the function, this is the name here. Uh, just a brief description of what it's gonna be doing. So this one's gonna recognize the speech from the video and transfer it into a text file. We have the parameters, the type objects, just leave that the way, it, that's pretty much default. And then the properties, so this is like really the parameter of the function or method. Um, so it's called audio path, it's just a string file. And then we also need to require that in order for this function to work. And the next one is the translate transcript. So whenever this one uh, recognizes the transcript and then it creates the text file, this one is now gonna translate that into some language. So the name of the function is translate transcript. The description is that it's going to translate the script. Um, again, the type is object. The properties are we have a source language and we have a target language. And they're both of type string. And one is just, okay, this is the source language that the transcript is in. And then what's the target language we want to uh, translate it to. And then for this to work, we need to require both of those properties. So we need the source language and the target language as the parameters in the function. And then finally, we give it the config list property, which is the GPT model and API key, which, whichever one we want, we want to use that we described above. We put that here and just set the timeout to two minutes. And now we're here at the agents. We have a user agent and then we have an assistant agent. The assistant agent is the chatbot. So this one is basically only going to use the functions that you have been provided with, okay? So we're gonna end up registering these functions um, so that the assistant agent can use them. And then we have the LLM config that we just created, right? So it knows what model to use. Now for the user agent, um, we just give it the name, a termination message. Uh, I don't actually want any input. I just want to do its job. I don't, I don't care. And then uh, max auto replies to 10. This doesn't actually matter. And the same thing here, um, this, this for my, for what I'm doing here and the way my system messages work, 
serve no purpose. Okay. So, but I just left it here in case you want to change up your messages. And now we have to register those two functions that we defined in the LLM config above here. So we just say user proxy dot register function, and it's called a function map. And then I just give it both of the function names that were defined in the LLM config here. If we don't do this, then it would never actually execute the functions. And then finally, we have to initiate the chat. All right, so I just have it as a function here. So I say define and initiate chat. I have three inputs here. So when we start this, you'll see how this works. Uh, I just want to give it the target path, the source language, and the target language. Now you don't actually need the source language. Um, I just have this here as an option, but you could define it in a whisper model as we'll see in a minute. Um, it's going to no, it takes about 30 seconds of the video or the audio, and it'll check itself which language you're coming from. And then finally, we initiate the chat. Now, what I need to go over now is all the functions that we are going to be actually executing from. Okay, now with all the functions, as I mentioned that there were three of them, and one of them, translate transcript, is going to call this translate text for each line of text it gets from the transcript to translate it to whatever language. So let's go to the functions. The first one is the recognize transcript from video. So it takes in one parameter, audio path that we just saw. And here is where we load a whisper model. Now I have it set the size small here, but there's also tiny, medium, large, and there's, there's another one, but you can choose what size model you want. The larger it is, the, I think a little more accurate, it's going to be with the timestamps and the actual, um, like transcript or transcribe that it'll have. And then what we need to do now is take the results and call model.transcribe on the audio path. And then we just have some variables here that we're going to initialize. And what we can do is for each segment from the results of the transcribing of the model, we're basically going to append the sentence, the timestamp start and the timestamp end for each segment. Okay. So what, what this is is so say from second zero to second three, we're going to say, this is the sentence that was said, and then it starts at zero second and then second three later on, it could say from second 30 three to second 35, we're going to have, we're gonna have this sentence and then the timestamp start and end, which will be 33 and 35. Okay. So it's going to, we'll see that whenever you get to the, whenever we execute it and you, we see everything. Um, but it's going to append this to the transcript variable. Okay. So we're going to basically have an array of objects that have the sentence and then the timestamp start and end. And then finally, uh, with this function, we save the transcript to a file. So we're going to create a transcription.txt file, W for writing to it. And then for each um, uh, item or each object in the array, we're going to grab the sentence and the start and end time. And then we're going to write in this format uh, to the text file. And then we return the transcript. And the next one, we have the translate transcript function that takes in the source language and the target language that we just saw in the LLM config when we defined the function. So we're going to open the transcription.txt uh, file, assuming it's there. And then we create, we initialize an array. And then for each line in the text file, we're going to take that line. We're going to get the timestamps and the actual text for the actual text. We translate the text from the source language to the target language. Okay. So in this function up here, we have, as you can see, we're using OpenAI. This is an example, just say how you can use Autogen, but then also just call OpenAI. That we're going to take that and we're going to directly, we want OpenAI to directly translate the source language to the target language. And then we just want to return that translated text. Okay, so we take the translated text, basically um, get the, the response back from it and then return that. And then when we return that here, we basically say, okay, well, we want to take the variable that we initialized the array and then append this translated text to that. Okay. So we have the timestamps. So we give it the timestamp here that, you know, comes with the transcription.txt and we format the line. And this is, I know this is kind of a lot and I'm just kind of going through this. You'll see this whenever we actually look at the transcription text. And then we take this and we append it to the array. And then all we do is we create a new file that we want to write to. So it's the target language underscore transcription dot text. And then we uh, write for each line in the translated uh, text or in the translated array of text, we just write to this text file. Okay. And that's it. And then we return that and we are pretty much done at this point. Okay, great. This worked wonderfully. So uh, as I said, the first three inputs that I have, it's what is your target path? So I just give it the full path to the, the video file. And yeah, I know this is a Peppa Pig video file, whatever the source language, uh, I know is English. 
and I just put French as a destination language. Now, so it finds this video. I want to recognize the speech and then transfer it to a script file and then translate that. So uh, it found, uh, you know, so we call the recognize transcript from video function, the audio path, this is the parameter, it found the file. So what it's doing is executing the recognize transcript from video. And as I mentioned before, it can actually detect the language first using the first 30 seconds. Um, and so it did that. And then as you can see here, for each timestamp for the first three seconds, it'll have this sentence um, for the next one and so forth. So it's a minute, it is a minute and three second long video. So it, it did correctly uh, transcribe the video. Now the next thing was, okay, so we got the response. Okay, this is the response from calling. So this is the array. Uh, this is where it had the sentence, the timestamp start and end. Okay, we saw that in the function. This is where it was appending it to the transcript variable to uh, respond with or to return. And then once it does that, you know, I call the translate transcript function. The source language is English and we want to translate it to French. So then we execute this function. And as you can see here, I'm assuming this right, I can't speak French. So I assume that this is this correctly translates um, all a minute and three seconds from English to French. As you can see here in the transcription.txt file that was generated, we created the transcription. Okay, and then we have the French transcription here. So it did the same thing. It just, it correctly translated and then saved it to a file. And this is great because you can have, you can have it translate to a lot of different languages pretty precisely too, especially if you use a larger model, it'll be a little more accurate with the timestamps. Uh, but you could also even bring in multiple languages and have them do it all at once and, and save them in different files based on the translated text. Okay. Thank you for getting this far and watching. And I hope you were able to learn a little bit more about Autogen, the functions. And then we introduced a new model for Whisper. And this allows you to translate audio into text. And then I hope you learned that now you can take any language. You could even have one audio file and then translate it into multiple different text files or multiple different translations, right? You could even with this, you could not just have an audio file, but you can now learn how to just translate text by itself. You can just take in documents and now you know how to translate. You had the functions to do this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next video. Leave any comments or suggestions below on your thoughts or if something didn't work. I'd be more than happy to help you. Thank you again. I'll see you next time.